Right then, so I've had a bit of a break, so hopefully I won't make as many daft errors. And hopefully I'll edit them out uh, using whatever it is that, that Joel uses. Right, so let's have a look at this then. So I'm still on lesson one, I'm still killing it here. Uh, so next bit we'll look at is the increasing and decreasing series. So if it's increasing, the one after it's bigger. If it's decreasing, the one after it's smaller. Then we've got periodic, which means it repeats itself over time. So we saw that on the front page, didn't we? So let's have a look at some examples then. There, there we go. Right, so example five. Uh, are the following sequences increasing, decreasing, or periodic? If periodic, state the period. Right, so let's have a look at this one. So the first one, if U1 is 5, U2 is 2 lots of 5, which is 10. U3 is 2 lots of 10, which is 20, and then it's 40. And we can see that that's getting bigger, so that's increasing. I can do that. That is not beyond my capacity. Although I can't, I am not. Can I spell increasing? No. Maybe it is beyond my capacity. There. Right, next one then. So this one doesn't give you what you one is, but if I set n as one, then I know what it is. So u1 will be one over two, u2 will be two over three, u4 will be three over four, then four over five, five over six, a million over a million and one. So it's kind of getting bigger as a value. It might not, like the jump might be getting smaller, but it's always getting ever so slightly bigger. So we're gonna go increasing with that one. Although it is converging towards a limit as well, which is interesting. Right, so let's try this one now for C. So if I put U1 in, so U1 is six, and then I've got three over six, it's a half. So then I've got three over a half, which is six. So then I've got three over six, which is a half. You can see how this is going, can't you? So this one is periodic. And if you look, it repeats itself every two. So it's period is two. That's nice. All right, let's have a look at this next one then, D. So once again, I've still got a start point, but if we put n in as one, I've got two to the power minus one, which is a half. Then if I put n is two in for the second position, I get two to the power minus two, which is a quarter. And then an eighth, and then a sixteenth. So you can see that the values of that is getting smaller. As a number on the bottom doubles, its value gets smaller and smaller. So that's going to be decreasing. So right. Right, so let's have a look at E then. So I'm giving U1, U1 is four. And then U2 is a half of U1, so that's two. U3 is a half of U2, so that's one. And then a half. So you're happy that that one will be also re decreasing. So we've had two increasing, two decreasing, and one periodic. What do we reckon the next one's going to be? Now, this one actually came off an exam question. It was a multi choice on one of the first A level maths papers. And loads of people got it wrong on the multi guess. And I'll tell you why. Because you know that the sine graph repeats every 360. That's not 360, it's 720, you're Or 2 pi and 4 pi. So that's what people went for 360 or, or 2 pi, whatever the question was. But it's not asking for all that, though, because n isn't a real number. This n is a counting number, it's a natural number. So if I put n is 1 in, the first term is sine of pi by 2. The second term is sine of pi. The third term is sine of 3 pi over 2. And the fourth term is sine of 2 pi. 
So sine of pi by two or sine of 90 degrees is one and then it's zero and then it's minus one and then it's zero and then it repeats again. So actually this one is periodic, but the period is four. So that cut out loads of people on an exam question because it just automatically said, yeah, it repeats every 360 or two pi. Well, that wasn't what it was after because the n value here is a counting number, it's a natural number. So it's got a period of four. So that's nice to see that. Uh, what we're going to do now, oh yeah, so series and sigma notation. So, it says here when the terms of a sequence are added together, the sum of the terms is called the series. So if I'm adding them up, it's a series. So look, so you've got a sequence and you've got a series there. This is telling me to add up the first k terms. There. So for this example here, I'm going to add up the first five terms. This tells you that I'm starting with n is one and I'm going to n is five. So if n is one, it's one squared. n is two, two squared. n is three, three squared. n is four, four squared. n is five, five squared, and I'm adding them together because the sigma means add them up. So I've got one plus four plus nine plus 16 plus 25, which gives me 55 there. So then I've got this next one here where it adds up the first four terms. So I've got one over one plus one over two plus one over three plus one over four. And if you bung that in your calculator, you get 25 over 12, point to that. Now I can change the letter. So this one's been a little bit sneaky here. So we change the letter, but it doesn't matter. And I'm only adding up the first three terms here. So the first term would be seven lots of one minus one. Then the second term will be seven lots of two minus one. And then the third term will be seven lots of three minus one. Didn't figure that one through, so I ran out of it. And if I do that, what have I got there? So I've got a six. I've got 14 take one is 13. And I've got 20. And if I add them together, it gives me 39. That's not too bad, is it? It's quite nice. When we get on to using the AP and GP formula, we ditch sigma completely and just use S. Well, I do. Anyway. Oh, it's quite nice. Look, see, look. You can check it on your calculator as well. So it tells you to evaluate that on the CG50, press F4 for math, F6, F2. Should we give it a go? Uh, so I've got that. Let's just delete that. Delete it all. Yes, I'm sure. Right, so what did it tell us to do then? So it said, press F4 for math, yep. Press F6 for the next little page of things. And then there you go, F2 is sigma notation. So I'm going to do, what am I doing, what am I doing? So I'm doing uh, N squared from one to five, aren't I? So I'm going to press my X feet to T key for X squared. Uh, press right or down, see which one works. So right works. So x is one to five. There we go. And it does in fact work. Yeah. Right. Let's have a look at the next bit. Cool. That's quite nice. We've got an exercise coming up. Tells me I can stop talking now. I'll see. So we've got a problem solving one. So the problem solving ones are really nice. So that's quite happy. So it says a sequence is defined by u1 is 2 and un plus 1 is 1 minus u. 1 minus 1 minus u. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying. You know what it says. I don't. So write down a says, write down u2. So u2 will be 1 minus 1 
minus two. So is that going to be a minus one then? So u2 is minus one. So then u3 will be one over one minus minus one. So u3 will be uh, half. Then u4 will be one over one minus a half. So I've got one over a half. So u4 is going to be two. So my sequence went two uh, minus one a half two. So you can kind of see that it repeats here. So it repeats every three. And the question is, can I use that to help me? So I want now a sum. So my sum, if you think what it will do, oh, stupid things change size. So it'll be a two plus a minus one plus a two. So then that bit gets, re uh, sorry, plus a half. Then plus a two plus a minus one plus a half. And it's going to repeat that, then blocks of three. All the way up to the 200th term. So I need to know what the ending is going to be. So this repeats every three. So if I do 200 over three, that's going to give me uh, 66 and two thirds. So it will repeat the two plus a minus one plus a half. It will repeat that 66 times. And then at the end, I've got the law, the first two terms here out of the first row. So then we're going to add on the two plus the minus one. So my sum from n equals one to 200 of un will be 66 lots of three over two. So I've got two take one is one plus a half is three over two and then add on one. So I'm using this and using the, the kind of like the periodic nature of it to work out. And that gives me 100 there. there we go. That's quite nice, I like that question. We don't really see many of them on our paper, but there's no reason why we can't. They're quite nice questions. And that's me done. Trying out a new way of recording with new packs that I've not seen before. So all is good. Right, so in theory, you should be working on exercise one now. Thanks. Right. See you later. Bye-bye.